Hey guys. So after many years of animating, I actually think that having a UI, a setup in Maya that it caters to the individual is really important, especially as you move about different studios, different places. So I'm going to show you guys why that is important and how I go about setting up my Maya so I can actually get the most bang for the buck for my animations. And I don't have to think about anything else except animating. So without further ado, Let's get started with this episode. Welcome to another Animation Power Tips. This is episode 6 of season 2 of Animation Power Tips. This series is sponsored by Autodesk. Once again, thank you very much to Autodesk for sponsoring this series. It's highly appreciated. Now, here's the thing. I actually been animating for a while. I'm an animation director. My name is Harvey Newman for all those that don't know me. And uh, that for sure, for sure, uh, one of the things that I have learned over the years is that when I change company or I go anywhere else that is new, the very first thing that I do is set up my Maya the way that I want my Maya to be. And the reason why is that Maya is a software that caters to a lot of people in a lot of different disciplines, right? Animation is just one, but there's also modelers and like, you know, um, people that actually do like cloth and fur and hair simulation. There's all kinds of stuff that Maya can do it doesn't cater to you as an animator. So because Maya caters to so many people, your job as an animator, your job to actually kind of like make sure that you don't get distracted is to kind of like declutter your Maya and also make it your own in the best way possible. And this is what I do when I start. So I go through and I start chopping anything that I don't need because experience has told me that certain things are really not needed in Maya as you actually kind of like, you know, go through the years and start working and do different things. So I thought about creating this episode that I is catered to all those that want to actually streamline their Maya setup as much as possible. So come with me and let me show you what I do in Maya in order to streamline it and make sure that caters to only animation and animation only. Let's do it. So as you can see, I have my Maya set up. It's super vanilla. It's basically out the box. The only thing that is missing is that little window that pops up right in the beginning when you open Maya saying like, this is Maya. Would you like to actually see this window all the time? Besides that, it's exactly the same. Very first thing that I normally do when I actually start Maya is to kind of like declutter my UI. And the reason why is that I want to see as much of my viewport here as possible. There is people that actually work with quad view and that's okay, but I like to uh, animate with just a viewport, one view only. So I'm just gonna create a polygon uh, sphere um, and I'm gonna make it like slightly bigger just so you guys can see. This is kind of how I like to work so I can actually select the object and, and like kind of zoom in and rotate and all that stuff so I can see as much as possible of my animation. So because of that, there's a lot of stuff around in the UI that I don't need. Uh, as an animator because I, I you genuinely stop using it. The very first thing that you don't need is normally this shelf right here. And the reason why is that when you start animating, you normally actually go through here and if you select an object and then you actually want to kind of like rotate it or scale it or transform it, you select these things. But for all those that have been animating for a while, when was the last time that you actually went, I now want to rotate it and you go here and then you rotate, but now I want to scale it and you go here and then you scale it. Not a very efficient way of working. So as most of you know, you use your keyboard keys and you use your W's, your E's and your R's in order to kind of like go forth and conquer this situation. So if you don't use that, and most likely this buttons here on the bottom, you don't use it either, which is just basically going through different views. You normally can just like press space and go to another view. And if you actually hover over one of the views, you can then go into front view or perspective. Notice that I'm hovering and you can have different views. So you kind of get the same thing by just pressing one button. No real reason for this to exist. If you actually go into Windows and then go to UI Elements 
you have this little window here. Um, you can take it off um, and then start actually kind of like checking what you don't need in Myomaya. So as mentioned before here, this toolbox, you really don't need it. So you take it off. So as you can see, now I have more space to see my animation. Like it's taking less of that UI element. Now, what else don't you need as an animator? This is called the helpline. And as you can see, when I go into any kind of like menu, or if I move the objects in the world, or if I go to my shelves, you can see what everything does. This is really useful when you get started, cool. However, after a while, you know exactly what kind of tools you need, and you don't really need this information down here on the bottom. So the helpline stops being useful, therefore, untick it. This is the Mel or Python, depending if you actually kind of click on this button. What it does is basically allows you to quickly trigger commands, right? So if you have any scripts that you want to action, you can enter them here and you can run them. Over the years, what you would do is actually go into the script editor, um, which is this guy here. And the very first time that you open it, you will look something like this. And you would go into the script, a script editor and then you add your command here, and then you trigger it there. I don't remember the last time that I've used this mail command line here. Normally you just open the script editor and you do your, you do your stuff here. So it doesn't really help anymore. So therefore you can remove it. Now you definitely need the timeline and you definitely need the time slider. So uh, you can leave those, uh, which is cool. We'll get to those in a little bit because you can change them a bit. Um, the shelf you need, the status line, which is this thing here on top, you definitely need. And that is about as much as you can save as an animator in terms of UI for your Maya in this, in this particular uh, menu. There's more things you can do to actually kind of like streamline and kind of like clean your UI. So Maya, uh, since Maya 2019, I think, you have these tabs that allow the certain menus to collapse into the sides and they have been godsend to me because I like them a lot. You use your outliner quite a bit so you can actually leave that on the side. And notice that here on this side, on the right side, you also have tabs. And this is the channel box in the layer editor. You can click that as you can see, now you have more real estate for your viewport. So these tabs are really, really cool. I'll show you in a bit um, how I move them about. But for now, um, this cube is yet another thing that over time you probably don't need it. Um, the very first time that you use Maya, normally you actually click it and then you see the different perspectives and you move around and all these things and it looks really neat and looks really special. After a while, you just use your mouse and you just go in and out of whatever you want to see and you really don't need that cube. So in order to disable this cube, if you have to click this arrow here and go into preferences, you can untick show cube and then save. Now the cube is no longer there. After a while, you don't you stop seeing the cube, so it doesn't bother most people, but I'm thinking you should keep it as streamlined as possible. Now, going back to the tabs, um, the channel editor is very important to you. And what's important to you as well as an animator is probably animation layers. A feature or a setting that most people don't know is that you can float this window. So if you go into show and go floating window, notice that um, in my other monitor here, <laughs> this window showed up, which is exactly the same copy of that, which means that you no longer need it right here on the bottom. It means that you can float it and leave it on top and you can just do this in order to make it disappear and only have your animation layers. And then um, you can either uh, show your channel box or hide it. Now, by default, you also have the attribute editor. If you don't need it, you can close the tab. It doesn't show up anymore. And then you have the modeling toolkit. We animators, we don't need it, so close the tab. So now you have channel box and outliner on either side. You can move the outliner if you actually go into here and then grab it. You can move your outliners to, to the, this other side here if you like. You can move it to this other side here so you can have both windows in the, exactly the same place. That saves you having to go left and right all the time. 
So that is basically me uh, making sure that UI is as minimal as possible. Um, one of the first things that I do as well is like making sure that my timeline is as big as possible or as big as I like it. So, so that's the timeline. Um, you can like change the size of it to whatever size you like and that's all right. What I like to do as well is like my time slider here, I like to move it to right there on top. And the reason why is that I like to see my timeline here on the bottom only and not have anything on the bottom so I can basically be animating here and moving my time and then pressing play or whatever I need to do. If I change my time slider or the range of my time, it's a very specific action that happens not as much as me moving around my time slider. So if I would like to change my range, I'll go in here and change into that, but then I'll be down here all the time. This is why I like to separate both, leave one on top, another one on the bottom. That's basically me rearranging things. So this look is much more the look of the Maya that I like to work with. This is how I like to kind of set it up. Now you can do a few more things. So the first thing that you should do is that make sure that you save your UI, your setup as fast as you can. So if you go into here and then go into save current workspace as, you can give it a name. So let's say minimal setup animation. Random name, but this will do. So if I go back to my setup, now I can actually see that it's basically the same exact thing that I had before. Now, a few more things to note is that you don't need all these shelves with all these different uh, options because what you like you don't really do poly modeling or sculpting or like deal with curves or rendering or vfx or vfx maybe a bit of rendering but not the vfx stuff not the mesh not the motion graphics so there's a bunch of shelves that you can delete in order to kind of like make sure that you have as minimal of a shelf as possible to delete shelves you just select whatever shelf you actually want from your um, from your menus, for example, curves, and then you just click the trash button. It will ask you to confirm, you say yes, and then you just kind of go through all the shelves that you don't need. So if you do rigging, leave rigging, but I don't, so therefore I don't need it. I'll, I'll go ahead and, and take it off. Maybe I'll need rendering if I'm actually working on my own shots. If I'm working at work, I don't, so I delete that as well. VFX, I don't need it. VFX, VFX caching, I don't need it either. Uh, custom, I, for sure, I definitely need it so I can put my own buttons. Mesh, don't need it. Motion graphics, don't need it. X-Gen, don't need it. And Turtle, I don't need it either. So now I have a much more minimalistic shelf. Um, I can save all shelves. Um, you can basically save your preferences whenever you have it, make sure you do that. So make sure that all the windows, everything is set and stays the way it is. Um, so now as you can see, it's much more minimal. There's much less for you to think about when you actually start animating. And this is a much better way for you to start animating because you can just focus on the animation. Again, as I keep saying in this channel, you should focus on what you are doing only in your Maya because uh, Maya is such a vast program that sometimes it can confuse you. So this is the way that I found that kind of like just gives me peace in my mind. It's a little bit of a Zen setup, right? Now, um, there's something else that you can do. So for example, if uh, once again, I'll go ahead and just create a sphere here. You can uh, go into your settings and start kind of like playing with the settings to make sure that they are as you want them to be. So uh, for example, I like my manipulators to be a little bit thicker, a little bit uh, bigger than they are by default. So normally the line size that Maya gives you is something like this. This is by default how you actually see your rotate, um, your rotate uh, sphere. I don't know why, but visually I feel like I'm never gonna pick a line that thin. It feels way too thin. So I normally go to my settings and then increase it by about three. And then I feel like I can actually pick that line strong all the time. It's it's, it's a trick of, a, of the mind, but it helps me a lot. Um, so that's one of the things that I do. 
Um, I also uh, go into my animation. Um, depending on the shot that I'm working, uh, you might be able, might have to play with either DG or parallel. If your Maya starts actually slowing down or um, crashing quite a bit, sometimes used to do with the evaluation mode. Um, I like to also go to my files and projects and make sure that whenever I open um, a window, that is always the Windows window and not the Maya default. And the reason why is that the Maya default to me feels very much like very minimal and uh, doesn't allow me to get to my shortcuts in Windows. So if you actually go to OS na native, all the bookmarks, all the things that you have pinned on your left, of, on the left of, the, of your window will show up and allows me to kind of like drill down on the folders that I want much faster. So that's another thing that I like to do. I like to go to the time slider as well and also making sure that the uh, key tick size is bigger than the default. By default, if I were to set a key here, the keys are actually very thin. So if you have a lot of back-to-back -back keys, let, let's say you have lots of keys and you have like a timeline that is a thousand like long, you can start to see that here like the keys are starting to look very much indistinguishable, like very thin. And, and to me, it kind of confuses me. Um, you can always kind of like drill down and make sure that you see them better. But I like to actually get my tick size, my key tick size to actually be a little bit thicker. So about a three or four to make sure that they actually show up uh, when I animate. So that's all I had for you guys. Pretty simple pretty straightforward and I hope it was useful. The UI in Maya can be daunting sometimes. Uh, make sure you change your Maya, make sure that you take some time to make sure that your Maya UI, it's your own. Uh, make sure that you actually kind of like tweak things, even colors on the background. I didn't show it in this video, but I have my own colors gradient that I like is a bluish with a white to make sure that it looks like daytime in my Maya all the time, which is great, I love it. Um, make sure that you actually minimize the, the UI because I feel like you can think better every time you open Maya every day, especially at work, when you have your own setup done in your own computer, you can think better, you can animate better and you make sure that the shortcuts, the keys, the setup is your own, which will make you faster as an animator ultimately. And that is what we all want. I hope it was useful for all those looking to streamline their Maya UI and their workflows. Um, now, I have, as always, to actually give a big thanks to my Patreon um, supporters. They are great and they allow me to actually kind of like keep on doing this thing. Um, and uh, the support is highly appreciated. If you're looking to support, please head over to Patreon and check me out. And as always, stay well, stay safe. Peace. See you guys next time.